Um, thankfully, Mark wasn't picking up my emails this morning saying, I might not be there, I might not be there. So, but I managed to get here. Took my car to my mechanic, who is fixing it regularly. Mm -hmm. So, um, I do like to roam around, but I think the room's big enough that I don't, do we need a mic? Are you, we're, is there a mic up here? Mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, Oh, it's just hard to resist this. I just can't. So happy Fourth of July, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> no taxation without representation. Anyway, um, here's here's my official welcome and, and speech. So um, beautiful room to be in, too, so, in the chapel. There are multiple people here who will be able to speak Cornish and correct me on my accents, and and at least two people have tried to teach me this this morning. Um, Dinner Vegerno Haven Campus Penskol Trumo <laughs> Councillor Jesse Foote Avi Aviworth Consul Kerno <laughs> Welcome to Cornwall and to the Penryn Trumo campus Trumo campus. Uh, my name is Jesse Foote, I'm the Cornwall Councillor for the St. Germans and Landolf Division. And one of my roles as Cornwall Councillor is um, serving as chair of the Cornish Minority Status Working Group, which is a real privilege. Um, and thankfully that role has brought me here today. Now, Penryn, the Tremo campus, plays a very important part in Cornish history, as it was the site of Glasney College. And we have Glasney building here on, on the campus. And it was a seat of learning where many of the Cornish language plays were written. That was before its destruction as part of Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. Plays such as the Ornalia were performed around Cornwall in Plenanguari, playing places, some of the oldest performance spaces in the, in the British Isles. Now, I love this part of the Cornish history, as I was born at Foots Barn Theatre near Liscard, so I come from a thespian background. Uh, we can talk more about theatre at lunch if you're interested. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, back to the seat of learning. Splend, splendid. Today, EU funding has helped Cornwall to develop a new seat of learning that's here at Tremont campus, home to both Falmouth University and the University of Exeter. The University of Exeter includes the Camborne School of Mines and the Institute of Cornish Studies, which carries out research into Cornish history and how that history informs issues today. Vicki Jenner from the Institute will be running work workshops later to show one of the current research projects. Meanwhile, Falmouth University's film school is supporting our annual short film competition in Cornish. I'm going to say film, but I'm not sure how you, how you say it. That's my, uh, my Northern Irish version. Film K, and has just completed research on developing a broadcast service for Kerno similar to BBC Alba. In Red Roof. Present Kerno nears its completion and opening date in September of this year. Now, this will be much more than a library or Cornish Records office. It, it's a multi-million pound investment in providing a physical base for text, film, images, records, culture, and heritage. So it will be a center to host all things Cornish. I'm really looking forward to it opening. It's going to be amazing. Next year, we hope to have some of the original texts of Cornish plays back in Cornwall, where they'll hopefully be in the treasure room at, at Crescent Kerno. Uh, so we hope to have uh, Junius K, the Life of St. K, uh, from last year's Celtic Knock venue with the National Library of Wales, and hopefully some other ones we'll get as well. So we'll see how it goes. Since the Cornish were recognized as a national minority under the Framework Convention for the Protection of National Minorities in 2014, that's a mouthful, I know, Cornwall Council has taken the importance of Cornish identity and culture much more seriously, much more seriously than central government anyway. I have mentioned already Crescent Kerno and the public broadcaster research. It's also the council that has taken the official lead on promoting the Cornish language. So you'll find bilingual signage now seen all over Cornwall and we're looking at supporting more online use of Cornish and also in schools. We're engaging with education partners and schools to address barriers to learning about Cornishness in our schools. There's a big gap in our school curriculums right now. Residents, paras, parents, teachers, and schools are looking to fill that gap with lessons on Cornish history, language, and culture. 
Results from the 2017 FASC survey, that's the pupil level annual school census, show that over 51% of school children in Cornwall now identify as Cornish. And the Cornish Embassy, or Tick Box Bus, continues the campaign for a Cornish Tick Box in the 2021 census. But as well as campaigning for that Tick Box, the bus aims to raise awareness around Cornish national minority status and encourages people to think about their Cornish identity and what that means. And it's been one of the most successful public engagement tools that I've ever been involved with and a, and a real joy to deal with the bus. So the bus will be on campus tomorrow. So when you're here tomorrow, each one of you can find out and go on the bus and take a test and go through the embassy and find out just how Cornish you are. And you could get your Cornish passport or your Tremon gum nuts. I hope you do. Everybody gets their passport, by the way, when you come off the bus, so don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> Please come on the bus and check it out. Someone once said, someone in this room, I've heard him say that, you know, the more Cornish air molecules, oh, air you breathe, the more molecules that get into you from each pasty that you eat, the more Cornish you become. So the longer you stay here in Cornwall, the more Cornish you become. Now, some of those molecules are going to be finding their way into your lunch today. So you'll be having pasties for lunch. Uh, and now remember that each bite of that pasty that you take, the more Cornish you become. <laughs> so breathe it in, chew your pasties, and enjoy. So we're a small nation here in Curnow, but we punch well above our weight. And we're growing in competence and aspiration. The Cornish language is something to be celebrated Developing and encouraging the use of Cornish language is an opportunity to connect with people from around the world with an understanding of similar issues. We hope to learn from your experience, so we're very pleased to host this conference. But more importantly, the desire is to build on the links between our communities and find positive ways of working together. One of the themes of today's conference is sharing experience, and for us, this is vital. We look to what has been achieved with Welsh, Gaelic, Catalan. We look at that with envy. But we also look forward to being inspired by languages with less support and how they have made things happen, such as the Sami and the Berber languages. Thank you for coming to Kerno. I wish you a most refreshing and fruitful stay, and I hope you enjoy it. Miraz, I'm going to find out when my car is going to be fixed now. So I might have to go and be back directly, but enjoy the day. Thank you. Maraz Jesse, um, Okay, so I'm just going to uh, do a quick overview about the situation for the Cornish language and what we are getting out of the, the Celtic Knot conferences, uh, Wikipedia, but more importantly, what we think we can get out of it. Because I think, you know, we are a small language community. We're not doing that much on, on this at the moment, but certainly it's something we want to, to develop. So... Um, so the current situation for Cornish, uh, we've got, uh, well, already we hit an issue uh, in terms of how many speakers have we got, how do you find out how many we've got. So we have various figures, uh, so 300 to 400 uh, fluent speakers is generally the figure we use, uh, with 1,000 to 2,000 with some ability in the language. But the official figure that's banded back to us is the census figure, which had just over, uh, well, I think 500, at one point it said 551, but I've seen the last time I've looked up to check it, it said 600, but went, it went up somehow. But we've got a real issue with that because uh, it, like Cornish language is not an option in the census, so it's only those people who've written that in, so who felt strongly about their language. Of those, I know fluent speakers who didn't write it in because the language said, what's your main language? Equally, others say, 
uh, Cornish is their language, but they can't speak any Cornish. So the figures are really unreliable. They're all over the place. Uh, and it's really difficult for us to measure that properly. What we do know is that there's uh, a very high awareness of the language. There's still lots of people who think it's dead, but generally uh, there's, um, yeah, from the, uh, the statistics from visitors and from residents is that there's sort of, it's nearly 90% of people are aware of the language now. Uh, our examination, people are doing the exams, that's, that's going, well, it kind of goes up and down depending on what resources have been put into Cornish teaching, uh, different events that have taken place, but certainly this year we've got about 90, 90 people taking exams, which is great. Our main problem is resources and teachers. So this map shows where we've got classes. So the red dots are, in theory, classes, but I know certainly in North Cornwall, that's one person uh, being available remotely. So even that map is probably over, overstating the picture, really. Uh, the green dots are Yeth and Werin, so those are, those are pub evenings mainly, or cafes where uh, Cornish speakers or learners can get together and practice their Cornish. So. Um, and we don't have classes out in the sea, uh, but they are Sam's way of representing the classes outside of Cornwall. So we've got a class in Bristol, somebody here from Bristol class, a uh, class in London, and a third one somewhere. Not quite sure where that one is. Cardiff, yes. And those groups are very active. They tend to be very keen people who've left Cornwall and feel very strongly about their roots, and they tend to uh, be very active classes because there's a social element to them as well that they're doing things. Uh, so factors in the revival, we've basically had no support, no money. Uh, so all through the 20th century, it really relied on family networks, community activism, completely voluntary work. And it was only in 2003 when we got the official recognition under the European Charter. Um, some of the councils did some work with bilingual signage, and that's really now uh, come to Cornwall Council as the unitary authority. So that's now being worked as a, in as a deep, the standard is bilingual street signs. Uh, so as I've mentioned before, my job is working for the Cor for Cornwall Council. I was always a little bit like, well, do, do street signs really matter? But um, but it's been very, I teach a class in Truro and certainly the feedback from students is that they're, uh, it's all these little nudges that are there. So seeing it in the street, on the street signs, seeing it on uh, labels and things, they, that is always, lots of people say, well, I've always wanted to learn Cornish, but they never get around to it. Whereas there seems to be this thing that if they see it a bit more, they do, it's more of a reminder. They learn it in the class and they see the reminders during the week and stuff. So it, it does all help. Uh, it feels like little steps all the time. But um, so, so this century, there does seem to be uh, generally more positive attitudes to multilingualism, which is helpful to us. The internet has really unlocked opportunities. So obviously that's the theme of being here today. But there's all sorts of things that have changed for a small language like Cornish. So even just down to printing books where you know, you had, we've got examples of very niche books where we had to have a print run of 5,000 to bring down the unit costs. It's ridiculous for a language like ours, whereas now we can do small, affordable print runs. Same with film, using YouTube and stuff. Lots of things are much more accessible. It means that though that map previously, people can connect by email and use their Cornish in bits and pieces. So actually, we feel we're a language suited to the 21st century, and our size is still a really big issue, but less so. Uh, businesses are using Cornish. So this example is St. Austell Brewery. It's actually quite a big uh, com Cornwall company, but the beer is sold all over the place. Uh, so Korev is the Cornish word for beer. That's everywhere. People use it without thinking now. Um, Culture, I'll come on to in a second. I said about our rising exam numbers. And international links are so important to us. Um, so quite often one of the things, you go, what's the point in learning Cornish? Nobody speaks it. Well, obviously they do speak it. But also I've met so many people, like the people here today, but all sorts of other people by speaking Cornish 
I have met other people from other minority language communities. That's so important to us to find out what you're doing, uh, to actually feel part of a bigger community uh, in all sorts of ways that has value. I mentioned culture, so certainly one thing where uh, Cornish is, has been used for a long time and increasingly so is in uh, all sorts of aspects of culture and arts. So music, uh, you may have heard of Gweno, so she's uh, gone on to international success with her Cornish language album and that's been fantastic the way the media has treated her as a normal person who has a different language rather than, oh, you speak Cornish, you know. Um, and film, bits and pieces of film coming through, as was mentioned by Jesse earlier, we're commissioning short films now with the help of the university here. Um, lots of books coming through in Cornish language or featuring Cornish. Theatre, so this is the most recent example where Sturt's Theatre are doing uh, this play called The Shearing Gang, and uh, parts of that are it, songs and part, sections of the play are in Cornish. And it all helps raise the visibility of the language. It means the team of actors have had to learn Cornish, work with Cornish speakers, using Cornish speakers and ex extras. So each time theatres, films use it, it's, it's increasing our base of people who have used, are using the language and for us as a community, as Cornish language speakers, we're learning, we're gaining that confidence and experience of working with those uh, sectors, really. Um, we've had lots of bits and pieces going on, and it's only with official recognition that we've really brought that together in, in a strategy. So this is the second strategy. And I felt, when the first one came out, it, was, it felt like a turning point. It felt like, oh, we're rather than talking about the past, we're actually looking at the future for the language and understanding how the part you could play in taking it forward. So, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a council bureaucrat, so I'd like these things, but I kind of think they do, they are important and in, you know, in showing the direction. And overall, what we're trying to do is, is uh, double the number of speakers. How many speakers we've got to double, I don't know. <laughs> not quite sure, but um, you know the important thing is increasing the number and making it more accessible for younger people to learn. So uh, rather than waiting till you have the time to learn when you're retired, we need to make it accessible for children, uh, for young adults, so they've got a life ahead of them to use the language. So coming on to some of the examples of where uh, Celtic Knot and Wikipedia have made a difference to us already. So this is probably the biggest one for us, where uh, at the first conference in Edinburgh, the Wikipedia conference in Edinburgh, um, I'd spent hours, well, hours, it was certainly more than that, it was a long, long time researching dictionary technology, uh, what our options were for that, and what really went round in circles. It was so frustrating, and that conference I was able to talk to some of you, but in particular meet Dennis from Bangor University and have the time to really uh, check that what they were able to offer suited us. So the networking side was invaluable to me there. That was so difficult to, to find out what suited our circumstances without that time to, to speak to people. Um, so over the last two years, we've been working on our new online dictionary. So that's just gone online in the last month. So if you do have an emergency where you need to know what a Cornish word is for something, uh, go to uh, cornishdictionary.org.uk. And it's, uh, I'm very pleased with how that's worked. And uh, we've got a whole dictionary database from Bangor behind that. For us, it's a step forward because we're bringing um, through new terms from our team of volunteers, the Academy Canoeic, who's worked on this. So actually, we've, in the office, I can see all sorts of things from our past translations, from research that people have done. But if you're outside of that building, nobody can see it. So this is the first time we're making that all accessible. And we've got the infrastructure there now that we can pull together research and grow the language, grow the resources that are available to people. And then at the bottom of that, we've got our first, uh, our first um, 
example of pulling through images to illustrate the dictionary. So that's pulling through, this is all Banger have done this, uh, Darian, uh, Delith, where that's pulling through images from Wikipedia to illustrate that dictionary. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but it's basically a free resource coming, pulling that through. Um, you know, that all happened because of coming to that conference. So I'm very proud of that and really pleased with that. And we're, we've been meeting to look at how we can develop that and use that more. Um, another one on the networking is uh, Carl, Carl Morris, who came to last year's conference. Um, so I was really interested to meet him, how he's using open source data, lots of things online to create resources. So uh, the Kawetha Sanyakunuek, the Cornish language fellowship, uh, brought him down. He contacted them after the conference and had a session uh, to look at all the different things that you can do to create uh, affordable online content, memes, things like that. And um, there were about 16 people there, but it was really interesting how, you know, you kind of think, oh, there's not many of us, we can't do things, but actually it was really amazing the, the talent that was in the room, the different people that were there that could do things. And uh, so he's brought that into a report for us to take forward. In, and so I mentioned one of the last ones, Cartoon Fun. So she is a Cornish speaker based in Penryn. She wanted to come today but couldn't. And uh, she actually does all the Beano cartoons um, and using them as educational resources for English, but wanting to do, find ways to do that in Cornish as well. So it's, yeah, no, that... Weirdly, the, the Celtic Knot Conference led to that content, which led us to find out about people here. <laughs> On teaching, so we've got um, uh, we've got uh, Go Cornish is our new website, which Will here um, has just published earlier in January, and that's our portal really for all learning resources, but particularly for uh, school for young children, school teachers, and there's a program to go with that where they're going out into schools to teach the teachers and engage with uh, about up to 30, you know, coming up to 30 schools now. Um, and one of the interesting things with this has been a uh, joint working with Mentor Yes in Wales, so Maggie Ann Kunuik, so there was the Maggie Ann app in Welsh. Um, so a chance, go chance meeting uh, between Golden Tree, who've been doing this program, and Mentor Yes, has meant that we've got this app available to us, and that went online for preschool kids. And this is their Maggie Ann party that was held in Nankedra School back in February. Um, so that's an example where we're doing joint work already with, with Welsh, and we're really interested in how we can do more of that with other languages, because that brings the cost down for us. We've got the save on the development cost. Um, and certainly I think this wiki network is an ideal way of looking at that. And I, one of the themes I was interested in from the previous two conferences is how you are using Wikipedia as a learning resource. So that's one of the things I think we can learn from you over the course of two, over the next two days and how you use it in classrooms and things. We're not, we're not doing any of that yet. Some of our problems, uh, spelling, oh. Uh, we, we, could go, we, we could go on for hundreds of years on that if you want us to. Uh, so that really distracts our energy. Um, we've got a standard written form now, uh, which we're all meant to be using, but still people like to... Old habits die hard. Um, we don't have much experience of using Wikipedia. We do have some editors, some of them are in the room, so we, have, we do have Wikipedia presence, but we're not really using it. It's sort of a static thing that you read online. We're not actually uh, making the most of that. And also, we just don't have experience of running uh, editathons. So uh, Jessie mentioned Vicky's here today. She's going to be running a couple of workshops, workshops. So actually, just by hosting this conference, we were able to make contact um, and find out that actually there's, there's some real potential there, which so, yes, yeah, so she's uh, working on the Cornish Maritime Churches project. So it's a heritage project, but that's a, a good chance for us to actually think through how do we use 
uh, a heritage project like that to really think through how do we use Wikipedia much more actively, bring the language into that, and I'm hoping in the course of the sessions that we can actually link up with some of your languages as well, so to make that a multi-language uh, project. And it's a good one for us to just test out, okay, how do you create an article? How do you upload the photos? Just basic things that we can just build our confidence a bit and do that with you. And another one which um, we are very keen to do is, uh, again, the Welsh was really interested in how you talked about archiving Welsh music history, uh, but both today, you know, what's going on today and all the linkages between that. And I think really struck a chord with some of the issues we've got here. We're, we're, we're not recording our um, what's happened with Cornish music, and that's so easily lost. So uh, that's certainly one that we want to develop over the summer. And um, we've got lots of different organisations where I think in Cornwall there could be much more use made of this. So this is Chun Castle down in Penwith. Uh, beautiful, amazing place. Uh, no signage, which I think is fantastic. So you just go there and you get a real sense of wilderness. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what, a 3,000, 4,000 year old castle. If that was anywhere else, that would be a national monument and you'd have to pay 30 quid to get in or something, you know. Uh, so I think one of the examples at one of the conferences was how you have site interpretation on your phone so you don't need the signage but you've got all that information there and that feels like there's lots of examples in Cornwall where you've got things like this where there's no interpretation there's no information about Cornish culture Cornish history and actually I think maybe there's ways we can turn that on its head and turn it into uh, use Wikipedia to actually bring that alive in a modern and accessible way do to be as ahead of some of the other uh, English organizations um, yes, so that's that point. So I'll leave it on that one. So I think there's lots of potential for us to work with you and get much more out of this. And so we're all ears and we're looking forward to what you've got to say today. And do, uh, you know, there are quite a few Cornish speakers here today, so do talk to them. We, you know, we're really up for collaboration. Okay, Moraz.